Okay, hello and welcome back. We're going to get the shoes and the drums on the axle uh, eventually in this video. However, I need to teach you a few things and one of those is measuring ovality of the drums and getting the shoes on. This week's been uh, quite busy. I ended up with a 1970s uh, trailer with drum brakes and believe it or not, it uh, rotted through on the neck of the chassis and uh, this I'd spent most of the day welding up because uh, there's a lot involved in this. I don't think you can see it much but because it's quite dark, but I was told that if I got it finished in time, I could get on with uh, putting brake pipes on this Defender. Yeah, all great. Well, actually, it didn't. Uh, this is for tomorrow, which will be Monday's job. And, uh, yeah, I'll just quickly uh, show you this Defender. It's got a nice electric winch on the front. This is a, a template uh, Puma, and uh, it has a hard-working life. Nice set of tyres here. As you can see, it's a protected sidewall as well, and these uh, Cooper tyres actually work quite well. And don't forget, these are out working all the time. These are LT235, uh, 85 Arbor 16s. And they look pretty good. I might actually invest in a set in that when I uh, eventually get a vehicle on the road. Uh, we have to MOT these. And, uh, yeah, brake pipes on these things, they are quite vulnerable. Uh, not to being hit by uh, flying debris, but rather from corrosion. And uh, what the guy didn't do when he did an MOT prep on this, the apprentice, he didn't clean off and grease the brake pipes. And you can see the corrosion happening on, uh, on this one here. Not in the best of states, however, this just about scraped through on the MOT. Uh, you can see there's corrosion going through there. The testers don't like pitted brake pipes. Now up there, you can see a little bit of yellow chalk. Yep, that was a, a failure, so that's got to be changed. And uh, Muggins here, who happens to have uh, the experience to do these defenders, is going to have to do this. This was missed, and it's a bit sad, really, because that means it's just cost extra time. However, this is a very long piece of pipe to replace, and I might actually put a joiner in this. We'll see how it goes. Right, so uh, before we put the shoes and the drums on, I just need to show you a few things. Measuring ovality on uh, brake drums is really, really important, and uh, most people don't consider it. It will show up on a brake test. However, basically, if your drum is oval and not round, what will happen, you'll find, is as you apply the brakes, the drum will try to push the brake shoe away from the drum, and you'll feel a pulsing sensation in your pedal, maybe. It also affects the braking efficiency. OK, so I have a new brake drum here, locally, and this is a... Uh, disc brake measuring tool for measuring thicknesses is absolutely no use what ideally you need is a set of internal long lead calipers that are specifically for measuring brake drum internals you can measure in three places and basically what i'm doing here is dividing in into eighths so you're taking four measurements in total. Now, best thing to do is with the new drum, I can get a, an accurate measurement here. And this caliper, this vernier caliper, it's actually gone off the scale, but it is enough to be able to measure it, determine what the length is, and then make a rod up. And basically, I, I got a piece of stainless steel uh, six mil bar and then cut it to the right length and this is what we actually do in the workshop for measuring brake drum tolerances uh, so yeah here we go this is just a slightly under this size and you probably can't see it there however what will happen now is that i can put this in here and i can measure between the two and for fine tolerances Obviously, I can use a set of feeler gauges, but I'm uh, measuring in four places. This will give me an idea of how oval the drum is. The wider it is in one point to another, obviously, this will uh, indicate that there is ovality. Now, I've used something like 0.3 of a millimetre feeler gauge here. I'm measuring in two places, and that's fine. This is a new drum, and I always check new drums because I've been caught out before and uh, it's not nice when you have to strip everything back down again so basically yeah okay this drum's in good condition it measures out right i have this one here which isn't in good condition i measured it using two feeler gauges one was 0.5 of a mil and the other one was a 0.55 of a mil measured um 1.05 of a mil one way and it measured 
half a mil the other way. So basically, this has got an ovality of about half a millimetre. There's a difference of half a mil, um, which isn't very good. I would consider this drum to be oval, okay? So you can see that. Um, one feeler gauge there and I used two on the other um, angle so um, basically I would scrap this drum it's not in good condition also the deciding factor is it's, it's scored quite badly now I'll explain about this so you can see the scoring in here and it's fairly rutted it can get worse than that however this is the grip between the shoes and um, basically what happens is that the parts where the shoe bites into, which are lower, it, they actually overheat. This causes more friction and heat. And you can see the parts here, which are shiny black. This is glazed shoes. These, um, this is the higher part of the shoe. And uh, it's been hot, basically. Not hot enough to cause any damage, but it does affect the material. Glazing gives you a um, not a very good uh, lining or working um, surface on the brake shoe. So you can see how screwed up this is. It may not make a difference to you, but it will if you want good brakes. Now, I'd either have these skimmed to, to get all this scoring out, if it will be within measurement. A Land Rover haven't given us a measurement, but I presume you could skim this. You could probably take a mill off this and it would be all right. If you look on a new drum, it will say maximum diameter is 280.9 millimetres. That's the uh, uh, maximum permissible wear. So the uh, one thing that we do is to make a rod that is the actual maximum diameter um, and then check it. If it rattles in the drum, then you know it's worn past its limit. And this is one way of checking very, very quickly whether you have... Uh, excessively worn drums. The rod that I made up here measured at 287.3 and basically what I can do with this because I've got a millimetre of wear and if you skim out one millimetre that opens it out by two mils so there is an option if it's possible to actually skim this out so uh, not all is lost. On the other side, however, it's uh, in better condition. You can see it's got light scoring on it. The shoe will tell you the story of what condition the drum's in. Okay, so the working surface is okay. This would be acceptable, however, I'm feeling the surface is actually raised, so it's lower here and lower there. That's where it's worn the most. This would again need skimming. Now, if you were going to put a new set of shoes in, it would take time to bed in, and you wouldn't get very good braking at first off. Compared to a drum which has a, a flat surface and you have a flat surface on your shoe, you're going to get the most braking contact straight off. This way, if you were going to go to an MOT, you would want the new drums or skim drums and new shoes as such. Okay, so the drums that we're fitting on this, these are uh, all make ones. The part number is 576973. Now, they probably work out about £40 each. And uh, the deciding factor, basically, is between OEM, which are about £100, and these. Okay, premium range, uh, two-year guarantee. Now, I've just checked them for ovality, and they're fine. They fit. Skimming brake drums, you'll have to look up in your local area if somebody does them. In fact, our area, nobody skims brake drums. I'd have to uh, send them off, which is not worth my while. Last time we had any done, they cost £25 each. So you can see where we're working at. Some guys will just put a set of shoes on, so yeah, this is okay, and let them bed in fine, that's okay, but as long as you accept that you're not going to have decent brakes for quite a while until the friction surface is actually going to make full contact with the drum, which in this case will take quite a while. To be honest with you, it wouldn't pass an MOT, and I can tell you that from experience. So cleaning brake drums use 80 grit scotch bright. Clean the mating surfaces and then the working surfaces. There's nothing worse than having rust which will clog up your brake shoes and it'll give you a, a bad brake as well. I'd always recommend using a brake cleaner instead of blowing it out or just knocking it out on the floor. You want to make sure the dust is away from your lungs. This is presuming that your brake drum is in good condition and can be used again. 
At the back of uh, the workshop here, I've got a stack of brake discs. The top one you saw a video on and how cracked it was. Also did a, a pair of drums here. One was uh, okay and the other one was worn. Now, basically, we always do them in pairs, always do brake shoes in pairs, especially on the front axle or, or on the rear axle. Um, this brake drum was just within tolerance. However, it was actually a bit con um, convex. And uh, I thought, yeah, well, I'll change one. And the other one was worn up and it was uh, heat cracked as, uh, anyway. So, yeah, you always do them in pairs, whatever you do. Before you uh, go ahead and fit your brake shoes, just make sure if you change a wheel cylinder or if you uh, had them apart, whatever, that they are actually in position so you can fit the shoes on. There's nothing worse than getting to it and it won't fit. So you need it like this. So let's get on fitting the shoes. Now I use a ceramic grease which actually uh, is dry. It doesn't drip onto the brake shoes or anything. It is basically a good lubricant because it's uh, almost heat proof. You could use copper slip in the places which uh, you can see where I've just sprayed and this just gives it a little bit of lubricant. Down at the bottom anchor um, plate you really do need lubricant because it needs to move in that area. Right, so, uh, yeah, this is a bit fiddly. These springs, you have to have them fitted to the shoes. Remember which way you're leading in your trailing shoes are. And the way the backing plate is, is uh, actually a hindrance to fitting both of the shoes uh, easily. So you fit the first one, and then fit the second shoe into the wheel cylinder slot. And the bottom part here, to get the brake shoe into the uh, anchor bracket at the bottom, you're going to need an assistance and uh, using a pair of uh, mole grips or a pair of uh, adjustable spanners will work. You can push it. However, I do have a problem here because the axle is free floating. If you're on your Land Rover, it's not a problem. Now, I had to uh, make up this tool, which is a mole grip with a long bar on it. And believe me, that took a lot of effort. Eugene over there, my assistant, well, he's actually my son, he, uh, he was holding the axle still while I pushed it into place, and it is just basically doing that. With it on the Land Rover, you have everything fixed and it's solid, whereas this is just floating about. So, um, yeah, I even actually managed to uh, bend this uh, bit of the shoe, which is a pain. You won't get this on uh, your vehicle. So the shoes are tappable. You can move them to square them up. Use a copper hammer or a hide-headed hammer. Uh, don't use a metal one. Well, you could do, but it, that causes damage. So uh, anyway, basically, springs at the bottom one, this is a retainer spring, and this one is a return spring, which pulls the uh, shoes back once they, uh, you've taken your foot off the brake. Positions are important. You don't want this fouling the hub at all. Okay, so you have the adjusters here. The pins are uh, what the uh, snail cam run on, and uh, if you've got it right, obviously you will, once you wind the adjuster round, it will start to push the shoe out. Well, in this case, it will actually start to lift it up. But you can see how the snail cam works. And as long as it's in the right place, it will be adjustable. It's the same on the other side there. You have the snail cam and you have your adjuster pins, okay? I would recommend that you check them to make sure that the brakes are expanding and contracting and then set the cam to zero so basically it's not adjusting the shoe at that point okay and that's on both sides so this is before you fit the drum. Brake drums always come with some sort of wax on them or some sort of uh, corrosion inhibitor and you use brake cleaner to clean the whole drum before you go ahead and fit it otherwise you might find that your brakes are going to have issues and uh, brake cleaner is the only stuff to use because it doesn't use a uh, doesn't leave a residue on the surfaces at all so what we have is a shiny pair of uh, brake drums that we're going to fit and i know that i'm going to have a decent working surface on the brakes for a start i would expect you would have uh, checked your bearings cleaned them and then fitted a new hub seal this uh, axle specifically I haven't done the bearings on so I'll just fit this temporarily as a demonstration and the bearings are actually worn so they'll, they'll need doing. I've uh, got tutorials on the bearing replacement if you want to just check them out on the channel. So basically with the mating face here you're going to find that the drum is clamped between the hub and the wheel so you do not want any very large raised portions on the hub flange here so it's worth cleaning 
And uh, with this drum, I forgot to show you actually, I use Scotch Bright as well sometimes, uh, or, or P120 or P80. Uh, this is aluminium oxide. Scotch Bright is actually pretty good for scuffing up brake drums and taking uh, dirt and uh, dust off them, but it's not exactly brilliant for removing large amounts of rust. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that Scotch Bright is always handy to have around in a workshop. As you can see, that does clean quite quickly. Okay, so fitting the drum, make sure that you have your uh, location and securing screw hole in the right place and then fit the drum. If the shoes won't let you put the drum over, then you just need to tap them about until it will let you. You can tap the drum a little bit to move the shoes. A um, little bit of... Um, lubricant in there just to make sure that the screw will come out again some people don't fit these it's it's not a necessity but it's it's actually helpful to retain the um, drum onto the hub the wheel is the one that will clamp the drum securely to the hub face so the next thing to do is to adjust the shoes up and you use the uh, snail cam adjusters uh, i think i was a 13 mil socket i think it changes depending on what vehicle you got but basically you want to wind it up and then wind it off a couple of clicks or you can feel the notches just take it up a couple of notches okay so you nip it up okay not too tight okay and then just take it back one two notches okay you will be able to feel that that's two notches and then on the other side do exactly the same thing okay so you, you um, make sure you can feel it winding up okay and then take it off two notches that's two notches and the drum will spin. The shoes are not central at this point. If you need to bleed up the uh, brake system, then bleed it up by all means. Make sure you get all the air out of it and then pump your pedal. That will operate the brake shoes. Then you need to readjust this and make sure that you can turn the wheel. If you've got the wheel on and can spin it and you can hear the brake shoes kissing the, uh, the drum then that's fine okay I've actually taken these up one notch at a time because they've not been centralized and this is the important thing is to centralize your shoes um, and then recheck them again if you're not sure take it for a drive uh, use the brakes a bit bed them in and then readjust again and uh, this is the adjustment that's really important you don't want them binding until they're hot and you don't want them so loose that your pedal has too much travel this is something you will learn by experience okay with regards to adjusting these, you would do them on a service interval and not leave it until you feel like your brakes aren't very good or you've got too much brake travel. Okay, anyway, this is hopefully very helpful for you. Uh, I'll try my best to give you as much detail as I can. Right, so uh, Land Rover here, 300 TDI. You can hear it ticking over. It's a rather sick puppy that's turned up. This one is a uh, P Reg uh, 300 TDI 7 uh, seater commercial with a 2 inch lift and it's rotten as a peach. I'll uh, show you, I'll edit a video and I'll show you what sort of condition this is. This is actually terrible. I've got to make a decision for on behalf of somebody else what exactly is going to happen with this vehicle.